Hello and welcome to SourceCAD. Now I decided to do something different this time and I made a 3D rendering of vintage camera completely using materials generated using an AI material and texture generator which is called Poly. Now in this video I'll show you the step-by-step -step method of converting a simple 3D camera that looks like this to something like this. Now the best thing about this material generator is that you can use chat GPT style prompt to create textures that are completely customized as per your specific needs. You just type in what kind of texture you want and it generates it for you instantly and it is free for you as well to get started. So with that let's start rendering this camera in AutoCAD. All right, so here we have the 3D camera without any detail. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do here is start with 3D modeling workspace. So you can click this gear icon and from here, select 3D modeling. Once you are in 3D modeling workspace, go to visualize tab and select material browser. Now you'll notice that this object, this entire camera is actually made with one single material, which is global, the default material. We'll make a few copy of this. So I'll right click here and select duplicate and let's give it a name. So I'll call it leather and I'll call it dash front. All right. Let's make one more copy duplicate and leather dash back. And I'll make one more copy duplicate and I'm going to call it plastic white. Now let's make one more material here and I'll call it reflector. All right. So these are few custom materials. Now these are all exactly like the global material now, but we will change its texture. To do that, I'll go to poly. So open your browser and type this address. So with poly.com. Now that's going to take you to this. Here you can see all of these textures. Now these are default textures that are available for you and you can just download these textures and start using them right away. Or if you feel like the texture you need is not available here in this extensive library, then all you need to do is just type its name. Now, usually when you do that, you will find the textures that match your criteria. For example, I want leather. So I'll type leather and now it's going to give you some suggestions. So here are the three suggestions that we have available for leather. Now in this case, let's start with a selection, maybe the first one. And here it is. That's our texture. Also, you can see all the similar textures that are available. So if you don't like this one, maybe you can select something else like this one, or maybe I will select this one. Now in this case, let's first start with this ready-made texture that we have here. So I'll just scroll up and I'll go to view edit. And that's going to show you the texture. So here it is. That's how it looks like. And let's now download this. So click on download and now you can select the format 8 bit or 32 bit. Of course, 8 bit is the free format, but for 32, you need a pro plan. So in this case, I'll go with 8 bit, which is just more than sufficient quality for our current project. So I'll click on export. And now that's going to export the zip file that contains all the images, textures and everything that we need. So here's the zip file. I'll select this I'll drag it and drop it on my desktop. Okay, now we are ready to use it in our project. So let me show you how to do that. So go to AutoCAD. And now this is the leather which I'll use for the front of this. So I'll go to leather front. And here I'll select this edit material. Now we have the image option click this and now go to desktop and select the material folder which we just now extracted. So in this case, the material folder is this one poly. All right. And this is the color map. So for the generic tab, select this color map. And here it is, it is added. Now we also need to add the bumps and the textured pattern. And for that, go to this bump option. And from here, select displacement and click open. All right. So we've added these two and that's just sufficient. That's all we need for now. Just close it. And now the material is ready. So select this front panel. And now I'll go to this leather, right click, assign to selection. And that's about it. So we are done. Actually, it looks like it is not yet applied. So I'll just select the surface again and leather assign to selection. So I'll try it one more time because again, it is not yet applied. So right click, assign to selection. Now it is applied. So there we are. So now the texture is applied and you can see it. If for some reason the texture is not visible even after applying it, simply go to visual style and change that to realistic. 
Okay, so now that material is applied here, let's do the same for other materials. Now I'll make one more leather pattern and for that I'll go to poly, but this time I'll make my own texture. To do that, you can go to this quick generate option and now you can change the prompt right here. So as you can see, this is the prompt as well as these are the settings that were used for creating this pattern. Now you can change it entirely. So in this case, you can just type a new value here or you can also just go to this make patches option, type a new prompt and you can even select a reference image. Now when you select a reference image, Polly will try and create the pattern which looks similar to the reference image that you have selected. In this case, I don't want to use a reference one. I want Polly to create this material right from scratch. So I'll simply write a new prompt here. So I'll make it black leather fine texture and with that let's generate it. So here I also want a little bit kind of polished look. So here I'll select polished or you can just go with shiny if you want and with 2k quality I'll click on generate and here is the final texture. Now if you like this pattern if you want to use it well go with it if not you can add more details in this prompt. So I need well smaller details here so let's add that smaller details all right and generate it again and that's definitely not small detail so i'll just go with a completely different prompt here so i tried a few different prompts and this looks more like it so we can just go with this if you want to so i think i'll just go with this texture currently this material is generated with the default presets it is just making it in 2k but you can also generate it in 4k and even 8k if you want also as you can see there are different presets that you can select from for example you can just make it fabric like or you can just make it polished the first four presets are completely free but for the last four you need the pro plan now let's download this in 8-bit now let's extract all the files from this folder as well in the previous texture folder i don't want to create a new folder just for this and we can use the same one so i'll simply drag and drop it and i'll keep all the files from the previous one as well as this new one in the same folder so click continue and we are done and now we have a new pattern so let's go back to autocad and now i'll select this leather back click on modify and once again start with the generic tab select image and in this case we need to start with color map but this is the one which i'll select because the color for this leather pattern is actually black so that's the one click ok and now for bumps well we need this displacement to image and click open and we are done so with that let's close it and now that should go right here on this surface so select the surface select leather and assign to selection and we are done so here it is so the pattern is now applied now if you feel like the pattern size is not right if you want to make it even finer here so you can do that directly in the material you don't need to just download a new texture for this that option is right here so go to this material again double click this image and now change the size so currently the sample size is 30 i think a sample size of 10 should be good so i'll make it 10 for width and height now if you are changing it here then you need to change it for the bump as well so double click this bump and make it 10 for width and height all right and we are done let's close it and close it again and now here we are now this texture looks even better so we have this black leathery texture on the back and this brown leather at the front okay so that is done now the next material and that is plastic now plastic is a very boring kind of material with no texture or features it's just one single plain color but to add kind of a rough look i am not going to use it and i'll instead use poly now the plastic is also available here in this local list so you can obviously use it from there if you want so let's go with something like porcelain with a bit of imperfections so let's go to poly and click on this logo and that's going to take us back to the home tab right here and also we can just delete this leather pattern we don't want it so let's type white porcelain 
all right and here you can see that we have a texture available so let's use the one which we already have in our library so i'll select that and yes this is the one that looks kind of perfect so i'll use this so click on view and edit and this looks perfect for our example now i'll download this in 8-bit and let's just select it and move it out all right so once again i'll go to autocad and i'll select plastic white select modify and apply the images so i'll start with image and in this case of course we need to go to desktop and here is the white porcelain i'll select it and here is the color map select color map and in this case since i want it kind of to have a shiny look without any bumps i'll ignore this bump option completely so i'll only add the texture now with that we are pretty much done so let's just close it and add it here on this plastic piece and we'll add it here on this plastic piece as well right about here you know what we'll add it here too so these are some of the pieces where we will add it actually we will add it here as well this is the piece also okay and is there anything we are skipping well almost done this knob Okay, with that, we have selected everything where this material should be applied. Now, I'll right click on plastic white and select assign to selection. And here we are. So the material is applied everywhere it is supposed to be. Okay, so that's how you can use the custom materials from Poly. So if you want to now add some basic materials like a black plastic, which I'll use for the body of this camera for other components. Well, I'll simply go to this home tab and expand this Autodesk folder. Now, of course, I'll select plastic from this list, which is right here. And you know what? I'll simply expand this as well so that we can see it clearly. And here we have the coarse textured black plastic. So select it and move it right here. Now this is added in our library. We can use it. So this plastic will go here and it will also go right about here and everywhere else but let's just add it only on these two objects just to see how it looks so i'll right click here and select assign to selection and that's perfect that's what we want so now it's ready to be applied on everything else so i'll just select this ring and this one this here this and this piece as well we'll also select this one and here we have the coarse plastic assigned to selection and done now this is applied properly Okay, now this one is a glossy black plastic material. So to apply that, we need to find out where that is. So let's just see where we have, well, that material. So here we have this smooth black. That one we can use and we don't have anything else. So maybe I'll just go with that. So smooth black, let's move it here. All right, smooth black is added and I'll select this object. Right click on smooth black, assign to selection and done now if you want to add more glossiness to this you can do that as well you can go to your material click on modify and you can change its finish from matte to glossy all right now it looks glossy and that's what we want here so let's close it okay now there are several other things that you can apply here we have the lens here so this should be glass so for glass also we can directly use a ready-made material which i'll use from this so let's just go to well glass right here and now in this case i'll select this blue reflective or you can select this clear glass so i think clear will be better for this example so i'll maybe select this clear glass drag it and drop it here in the library right here it is added now select the glasses so this is the glass we have a glass here and we have glass here so these are the three objects right click on clear and select assign to selection and it's added okay so that's added now i'll also hide this glass and this glass so right click isolate and hide objects now we'll apply the black material here because that's where we are supposed to apply that and also i'll apply the reflector material right here so let's first apply it here so i'll just select this and this one is also the matte finished black color so Let's go to this coarse textured black and it's applied. So you can see that here. Okay, now for this one, we need a completely shiny object. Now we do have several metallic objects here in AutoCAD that you can use directly, but let me once again give you 
a really good example of how to use one directly from poly for this example and in this case i have actually selected a material already so i'll simply go to poly and if you have a material you can simply just go to its url and you can just type it and it's going to show it or if you created a material which you really like then you can click on this my library and add it to your local library in this case i already saw this material which just looked perfect for our use case so i just added it to my library you can actually find it as well for now let me just download it and then i'll show you where it is available in my library so here is the material which is very shiny and i'm going to be using it so i'll go to download 8 bit i'll export it so it is exported now i'll go to texture and right here we have my library so once you add it it's going to show it here in the library and as you can see my library is well quite big with several materials and right here we have that shiny material which i've already added in the library so we can always go here and use it from there okay so let's now go to the material which we just now downloaded and i'll drag it and drop it and once again i'll go back to autocad and here i'll select this reflector then modify and image and let's go to desktop and here's the material now this is the color map all right and of course we don't want anything else here no bumps or anything but we do want it to be kind of very reflective so i'll increase the glossiness i'll make it metallic and also i'll just add reflectivity so direct reflectivity 100 and oblique reflectivity 100 all right now it looks really very shiny that's what we want so select this then go to reflector and assign to selection done now this may look black for now but that's totally fine once we render it its real colors will just pop out now there are just two more things that maybe i'll add and these things are well the metallic objects for these two and actually for this button as well so this is steel so let's just add it directly from this list so right here we have metal and let's select polished steel and here we are we've got this steel polished right here so once again i'll drag it and drop it here so we have the polished steel added now all we need to do is just select the objects from here i'll zoom in and select this all right and select steel polished assigned to selection and done so that's added once again its color looks black but when we render it it's going to look completely normal so here we are we have got this thing completely customized now it's time to render it so let's bring everything that we have hidden so far so i'll right click and i'll go to isolate end object isolation that will bring back everything in the drawing and now i'll go to no shadows here i'll activate every kind of shadow with full shadow option and also here in the render preset i'll select the medium quality though you can start with low and then gradually you can increase the quality for now i'll just leave the medium quality i'll expand render and select render environment activate environment and select a highlight so here i'll select sharp highlights which is already selected though you can go with rim highlights cool light warm light whatever you select from this list well based on your requirement in this case i'll leave it at sharp highlights now I'll go to render to size and select a size. So 1280 by 1024, zoom in a little bit and render to size. And in just one second, we got this rendering, which looks quite normal. Of course, there is a room for improvement here, but that's a good starting point for now. Now, if you want even a better quality, you can start with maybe a 1600 by 1200 size. And also the render preset, you can change that to high and just a bit of zooming effect here. And with that, you can once again click on render to size. And here we are. So now it is rendering. It will take slightly longer but the quality will be better so that's how you can create it now with a bit of trial and error and with more custom materials you can create textures and renderings that look super realistic and if you give it enough time for rendering you'll get some stunning results so that's how you can make photorealistic textures using poly now here are some other renderings that i created using the textures generated using poly now check the link in the description and start generating your own textures and materials and i'll see you in the next one